If you're looking for extreme ETs, then you're gonna need a rear end that'll survive. And that's a problem we've been having with our Project 2000 Camaro. It's a long-term project and very soon, it's getting an 800 plus horsepower, 454 cubic inch LS7 from World Products. Now, what we're gonna show you today is the all new Moza M9 and integrated torque arm kit. We've already bolted it onto the car, but we're gonna show you exactly how we did it. Here we are again in the Power TV garage getting ready today to install our Moza M9 rear end kit for the F body and the torque arm assembly. Now what makes this system so unique is that it comes with two bulletproof components that work together. First, we've got this fantastic looking M9 9 inch housing and then we've got the Moza 4130 chrome molly torque arm. First, let's take a look at the torque arm. Made of 4130 chrome molly, according to Moja, it's patterned after the same style used in today's mod cars, and you can see just how sturdy this piece of equipment is. Now it attaches to our F-body chassis with a one and three quarter inch chrome molly cross member. It features a unique sliding front mount that allows the torque arm to slide and not bind. It doesn't use the factory OE trans mount, but instead it's got its own mount design that attaches to the floor. And as an added bonus, everything's TIG welded, so it's good for even 1500 horsepower applications. Now, let's take a look at the M9 housing. Now, you're probably already familiar with the Moza M9 housing, but if you aren't, it's one of the strongest 9-inch housings you can buy. The faceplate, for instance, is made from 3 8 inch thick steel, and the center of the M9 housing itself is made from 1 8 inch thick laser-cut steel, and it's a single piece of triangle metal. You can see here on the top and the bottom of the housing that it has mounting locations for the torque arm already installed. It's also got mounting brackets for the lower control arms, the pan hub bar and the stock springs. We ordered ours from Moza shortened two inches at each end just to give us more wheel selection which can be hard sometimes with an F body. And before we begin the installation we actually have to set up the M9 itself. Assembly of the M9 was a pretty simple affair. After all, Moses supplies the housing and the gears all set up and ready to go. After we unpacked and cleaned the housing, we had to install the centre section with the Moses spool and 4.3 gears. The case here has got upgraded 7 16 inch studs and aircraft grade aluminium, which is way lighter than an iron model. Next up were the axles. Now these are 40 spline, they've got star milled flanges, which are way lighter than a traditional uh, round model. They've been gun drilled, which again provide a lighter axle with less mass and very little reduction in strength. All that was left to do was to fill up the rear end with some fluid, and we were ready to start working on the cross member and torque arm. Now BJ's finished with the M9 assembly, it was time for us to get the cross member in place. It mounts pretty simply without welding. Here and here, just bolts directly to the floor, although if you've got a roll cage, you can weld it if that's what you choose. One unique feature of this cross member is that it has a torque arm mount point. The stock member mounts to the transmission. With this, you don't need to. Now let's get that M9 in place. BJ jacked up the M9 into position under the car and bolted in the control arms and the pan hard bar. Everything fit fine, and then it was time to move on to the torque arm. Okay, now this is really cool. Moser added a sliding front mount to their torque arm. Now this slip joint actually moves in and out as the torque arm moves up and down with the rear suspension, preventing any kind of binds in the suspension. And if we go to the rear end where the torque arm mounts to the actual M9 itself, what you see here is an adjustment buckle. This buckle, you can turn it in or turn it out, which will bring the pinion arm down or up six degrees and keep a good alignment with the rest of your drivetrain. This needs to be done when the car is at ride high and all the components are loaded in. We have a drive shaft, transmission, and engine. As with any adjustable torque arm, be sure not to adjust it too far. This can create thrust load on the pinion head and will generate noise that can travel up and amplify through the torque arm, kind of like a tuning fork. This can also reduce bearing and gear life. For now, that's it for installing the Moser M9. We're going to get it on the ground and wrap this thing up. Now 
So, sure, there's nothing in here right now, but very soon we're going to have 800 plus horsepower of Bill Mitchell built LSX power, and we're certainly going to be happy to have a Mosa M9 up the back to support all of that. And just so you know, it's not recommended for your daily driver. It's a very serious piece of equipment, but one that's got some great features. The 4130 chrome molly construction, the torque arm slider, and the pinion angle adjuster, just to name a few. Hopefully you've got a better idea of how to install this system into your F-Body. Until next time, keep your eyes peeled for more build videos on Project All Air.